man's gonna die if we don't get him to a healer. Martha. It's good to see you. And you, Clive. Jill? Otto said he'd been attacked by a Kashik. What exactly happened here? Those skies are what happened. Not long after they fell dark, we had our first visit. There were hundreds of them. Tried to storm the hill. Only a handful made it up here, but that was more than enough. The rest are still down there now. And while we have a few willing fighters holding them back, they're sorely outnumbered. What do you think, Clive? That we join the fight. I thought you'd never offer. Now, where I need you is the Fallen Gate. That's where the fighting is fiercest. Let the men know you've come to help. Something tells me they'll be pleased to see you. We're on our way. Do you think there were as many as Martha says? <laughs> More. I don't think they've abandoned us, do you? Wounded. We deal with the Akashic first. These men don't have the look of hired swords. If you've come to rob this place... You are mistaken, my Lord Rosfield. We're here by Madame Martha's leave. How do you know my name? Forgive me, my Lord. There wasn't time for introductions. We're with the Guardians of the Flame. Wadesmen? But how did you come to be here? Where is your commander? So Wade left earlier with a scouting party to find out where the Akashic were coming from. Did he? Take your wounded back to the inn. Martha will see you're looked after. We'll join you when on. And to think you took them for thieves. A fine reward for holding off the horde, that is. When did Wade and his men arrive? Not long after Rosalith fell. The Guardians asked me to shelter some of them that had lost their homes. They were making ready to leave just as the skies turned, and we agreed it was best we stuck together. Mother! Trouble! The scouting party's almost at the lift, but they got a pack of Akashic snapping at their heels! And they got wounded with them! They're not gonna make it! Damn it all. We'll worry about them, Martha. You look after everyone here. If any can still fight, send them to the lift. I will. You two be safe now. You 
my... my brothers. Mad dogs. A lot of them. I need you to get those who can still walk up the lift to Martha's. But what about... I didn't ask, Oscar. Sir. Sir Wade. Lord Rossfield. If you aren't a sight for sore eyes. Martha seemed to think you might need some help. And by the looks of it... We thought we could sneak by them. But we didn't know there would be so many. How could we have? Behind you! Damn it! We need to get the injured to safety. Do you think we can hold them off? We can certainly try. Are you with us, Sir Wade? Always. Then let's do our duty. Get him! Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. And yet again, you've pulled me from the flames. It's just a pity I keep walking into them. <laughs> you've never been one to shy away from danger, Sir Wade. Like any shield worthy of the name. I see you're all in one piece. Martha! Is something wrong? The lookout saw smoke coming from down Eastpool Way. Too thick to be a hearth. A second horde. Feel like finishing the job? Always. Jill and I will make for East Pool. You'll need to move the injured without us. Don't you worry about them. The moment my men are safe, I'll follow. Good luck. Get him! Nice 
Something's coming. Apologies, my lord. Did I miss anything? Only the first rounds to wait. Shall we? Anymore. No. I think that was the last of them. But it won't be long before the next lot arrive. Then we make for Martha's while we can. What did you find out there? The same as Sir Wade. Scores of Akashic. Well, wherever they came from, they're gone now. Our lookouts say the lowlands are clear. Hopefully we'll have enough time to lick our wounds. How many of your men were injured? A damn sight less than if you hadn't turned up. Thank you. It was a hard-fought victory. But as long as the skies remain dark, I fear the Akashic's numbers are only going to rise. It's not a matter of if the Horde will be back. But when? And whether that's sooner or later, we'll need to be ready. The inn here affords a good view of the land, and is easily defendable. I'd like to make this one of our outposts. What do you say, Martha? You'd have more men to guard the rest. Well, when you put it like that, of course they can stay. My lord, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oscar, over here. It is an honor to make your acquaintance, Lord Rossfield. I am Oscar. Oscar of House Murdoch. Murdoch? I... I wasn't aware the Lord Commander had children. Oh, he didn't. But his brother... My father did. I am Sir Rodney's nephew. <clears throat> well, go on, then. It's not for me to ask him. Yes, Sir Wade. If it please you, my Lord Marquis, might you take me as your squire? I would learn the duties of a shield from the finest. <sighs> I'm sorry to disappoint you, Oscar, but I'm a shield no longer. Nor was I ever the finest. And spending time in the company of an outlaw hardly seems a fitting education for one uh, aspiring to take his oaths. My Aunt Hannah once told me that a man is not defined by his title, but what he does in its name. You have accomplished much since taking on the mantle of Sid, winning no little honor in so doing. And I would sooner serve under an honorable outlaw than an unworthy shield. Not that Sir Wade and the other guardians are. I mean to say that uh, the. It's all right. We know what you mean. There is only so much the boy can learn from me, my lord. But a squire. Would that really be so bad? You were a squire once. And I'm certain Sir Rodney would approve.
Know that I'll show you as much leniency as your uncle showed me. I would not have it any other way. First, we find Isabel. Heard a bloke saying he saw ghosts on the far side of the wall. Ghosts? In a wall? I saw it with my own eyes. The whole of Orifice. We received the dame's message. There have been sightings of strange creatures, I understand. With the blue eyes? Yes. Like a kashik, but... different. They've taken so many. I've lost count. A kashik, but different. <sighs> Ultimus thralls. And what of your mistress? Is she here? Oh, no. She went to the garrison to ask what they were planning on doing about all this. Then we'll look for her there. Four left for more in the captain's orders. Half the garrison's been slaughtered by those things. We lost the captain this very morning. We've tried requesting reinforcements, but there's been no word from the capital or the Dominion in days. What more would you have us do? I would have you do your duty. Those at the Vale look to me for protection. And protect them I shall, because they are my charges and that is my duty. In case you have forgotten, the people of this town are your charges. But more than that, they are your people, your sisters, your brothers, your lovers. So you have a choice. Lay down your sword and watch as they are slaughtered, or take it up and do what is right. She speaks the truth, you know. This here, it's all we have. It's all that's left. What we have left is our lives. Do you really want us to lose them as well? Not if we don't have to. Look, there's a cask under the captain's bunk. Let's talk about this over a drink, eh? I'm listening. I'll have a word with him. Ah, oh, Clive. I didn't expect help to arrive so quickly. And sought to take matters into my own hands. It was a noble effort, but I thought you might still need some support. I'd like you to consider my needs. Ahem. <clears throat> what we need to consider is where the creatures came from. The way the survivors speak of them, one would think they appeared out of thin air. <laughs> and perhaps they did. It's hard to know what to believe these days. Hmm. We'll talk to the survivors. You're a pikeman, yes? What happened? I've got family in Moor. I heard the flood was spreading, so... I went to see if they were all right. And a pack of them glowing... things found me in the meadow. I ran for my life. I... I never did get to the village. Leave that to us. 
My family. That thing. Did you see the creatures that attacked you? Creatures? Uh, yeah, I... They came out of nowhere. They went for Joseph first, then me, and then... Then they were just gone. Do you remember where you were? On the road from Oriflam. We just passed more when... When... Where's my Joseph? It's all right. Just rest now. At least we have an idea of where the thralls might be now. We should head for more. See them with me. This Think there are more there are always more but i'd say we've done what we can for the time being then we should let isabel know You have the town's thanks. Don't thank us yet. There will be more. Many more. And you'll need to be ready for them. Oh, we shall. 
Isn't that right, Captain? Yes, milady. The garrison will be ready. Philippe here has convinced most of the men to remain at their posts, for now at least. <laughs> Hearing that the Dane would look kindly on any man who committed himself to the task certainly didn't hurt. Ah, it's not the most selfless of motives, I'll admit, but whatever it takes, eh? Now me, I never needed convincing. I became a soldier to protect the people I love. And the people I love include the ones standing before me. <laughs> Handsome and chivalrous. Now, if you don't mind, I have sentries to post. Milady. Lest you wonder, I'm not foolish enough to believe that this has solved all of my problems. But it has solved one, and that's one fewer than I had this morning. Thank you again, Clive. Our friends seem to have things under control. For now, at least. Let's go and put Otto's mind at rest. expecting you back so soon. It's not true. We've lost so much already. Come to claim your just desserts. Here you are. Best of luck out there, Sid. I was wondering when you turn up. Hello. How is it you always manage to arrive at just the right moment? Luck, I suppose. Any word on the rest of the realm? Hmm, let's see. Storm's still crying out for Mother Crystals. The nations are still in chaos. And the skies are still the color of a kick in the kidneys two days on. So... Right. Clive, we knew this was gonna happen. Well, not the bleeding skies part, but you take my point. Now's not the time to second guess yourself. Now's the time to visit the infirmary. Taya says your brother's awake. Thank you, Otto. So it was not Sylvester, but Olivier, who served as Ultima's puppet. And when Dion learned of this, he sought to slay the fiend. <sighs> Only for his father to take the spear that would have freed him. <laughs> Enough to drive a man to madness. Small wonder he hasn't stirred. I would be afraid to wake. Had I but reached out to him sooner, warned him of the threat Ultima posed. But now, both an empire and her prince lie broken. Joshua, what do you know of Ultima? Very little, I'm afraid, despite my best efforts. Eighteen years ago, as I lay buried beneath the rubble of Phoenix Gate, it was not death who came for me, but another. And it was while in my rescuer's care I first heard of Ultima. I've been chasing his shadow ever since. 
Ultima is driven by some deep, dark purpose, and for whatever reason, it would seem you are crucial to his designs. He will stop at nothing to have you, even if that means toppling an empire. But why me? What possible use could I be to such a creature? That is one of many answers that have eluded me. Yet, I am certain of this. It is not mere chance. You were chosen for a reason. All dominants carry within them the might of an icon. Nigh limitless power that is at once acutely limited. I wield fire, and only fire. And I only ice. Eight wardens for eight elements. But you, Clive. You are different. You are special. Your abilities begin with the flames of Ifrit. But they do not end there. The fact Ifrit can even exist goes against everything we thought we knew of dominance. Perhaps Ultima has been waiting for one such as you, whose potential is truly limitless. I've encountered that thing several times now. If it or he, as you say, needs me, why hasn't he claimed me as he did the boy? Were I to hazard a guess, I'd say the two of you are somehow incompatible. His mind not properly attuned to your body. His mind? Mind, awareness, spirit, call it what you wish. But I believe Ultima to be an embodiment of the concept. This is why I struggle and fail to contain him here inside me. I'm sorry. Inside you? With every setting sun, I feel my strength wane. And though the Phoenix's flames mend the prison I have made for Ultima, they do so at a cost. We must find a means to bring an end to him before I meet my own. What were you thinking? It was that or let him take Clive. And I've always had a soft spot for my brother. But that doesn't mean you should sacrifice yourself to save me. <coughs> Joshua. <coughs> Clive, it's Gav. <coughs> There's an army of Akashic at the gates of Canver. <laughs> well, what's the short of it? Uh, it's all tired, told you. The capital of the free cities is under siege by an army of monstrosities. The city guard are doing their best to stem the tide, but numbers ain't on their side. What of Lord Byron and Mid? Were they able to escape? No, but they're all right for now. They're hiding with Gav at midship. We have to get them out of there. Hmm. And we shall. Otto, prepare a stolas. Tell Gav to stay exactly where he is. Understood. Vivian. What's the swiftest route to the free cities? <laughs> that sounds like a question for the map. Look here. This road, through Tabor, should provide the least trouble. Good. What a coincidence. Tabor is exactly where I'm bound. Joshua, bed is where you should be bound. You don't think I told him the exact same thing? Were Taya not such a talented healer, I would surely have been inclined to agree. But, thanks to her ministrations, I feel I may safely rejoin my attendant, who was to wait for me in Tabor if we became separated. All right, we travel together. Clive! If he stays close to me, he'll be fine. Thank you, brother. Look after him.
Clive. How may I help you today? Here you are. Very good. Rutherford? Wasn't that the name of my uncle's manservant? Why would he be at Martha's rest? Blasted book. Here, you put me in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. I need a hand with a recipe. Are you sure it's me you're looking for? I'm not much of a cook. 
I'm all the cook will be needing, thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan's stew, right? Well, despite the look of the thing and that awful stench, people wolf it down. So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but, well... It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen, and I will not be outdone. So if you don't want to be seen as playing favourites, I suggest you lend me a hand. I've never been one to play favourites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, what's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of Skyworm. That's one heck of a name, innit? Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a tea. Only, turns out Skyworm livers and Drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Ivan said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Who's to say the ingredients even exist anymore? Well, that's a question for a scholar, wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? Kindly old fella who haunts the shelves, maybe? Fine. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. You do that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. Seems the hideaway's lost its appetite. There's a storm. Someone said, Will there be thunder? Sid, perhaps you can help me solve a mystery. I can certainly try. Who's gone missing this time? It's not who, but what. Mid scales, the ones she made for her workshop. I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight, and shortly after the lesson, well, they vanished. My first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere to play, but when I asked, they swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared. Which almost certainly means they had everything to do with it. Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. Thank you. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them, as always. What do you reckon we should do? Sid! Out of your studies, I see. And what is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. Of course it isn't. Well, not anymore, it's not. <gasps> oh! And just how long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We just dis dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Miss Mididol? Why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Miss Mididol said, The best way I see how something worked is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well, then your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh. <laughs> About that. The taking apart was easy enough, but it's the putting back we can't work out. 
Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. Then... Then... Um... You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> Like a chocobo wing! You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one day? I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh Gooch? I don't think he'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. Which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel, or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved. When I tried weighing an apple, and then somebody ate it. It's not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. You know what part's supposed to move, and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see, it's not so difficult. So... Now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. Ah, all finished. Yes! We did it! Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. That's right. We're Miss Mididol's hairs. Her hairs? Yeah, hairs for the future. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Mididol and Miss Shirley, I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long! Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. Hey, look! We never used the cogwheel. You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you?
a storm coming soon. Will there be... Well, did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Ah, oh, no, Mid will have my head. Thankfully she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid, do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies had been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war, it was a bitter pill. One she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her heirs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. Lawsman Harpocrates. I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valicia, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Ah, so the fabled Sanbriquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. <sighs> now, <laughs> Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the wyvern, their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Dragon livers. Uh, how very Sambraqua. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. But what about the drake's mint? Saint's bonnet in contemporary parlance, a herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add, that people once believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life, in which regard fried mortress of Skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the dish is complete. <laughs> 